a lightweight code editor that is based on VS Code can be accessed by a browser and it's completely free. Sounds too good to be true? Well, this time it's not. It is real and we are going to explore it today in this 3 Minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coder Dave, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. And welcome to a new episode of the 3 Minutes series. As you know, in each episode, I will try and explain a concept, showcase a product or a service, or yet try and teach you something, and all in just three minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. As I promised in the video about code spaces, which I've released uh, just a few days ago, and check it out after this video if you haven't yet, today we talk about a new awesome feature that GitHub has released together with code spaces. I'm talking about the new web editor experience, which is accessible directly from within your repos. And best part, it's completely free for everyone. But let's start the clock and get into it. The new web editor is a lightweight code editor completely based on VS Code. And it's similar to Code Spaces, but differently from Code Spaces, is not backed by any compute. It runs entirely in your browser. This means that it has some limitations when compared with code spaces, and we will see those in a second. But on the flip side, it's very fast to load, and it's a very quick solution to uh, change or edit your code without the need to have an IDE, for example, installed on your laptop or your computer. There are two ways to access this service. The first one is using directly the URL, just changing the github.com portion to github.dev. The other one instead is pressing the full stop keyboard button while you're in a repo. Let's jump into it. Okay, from the repo, I'll just press the full stop on my keyboard. And as you can see, in just a few seconds, we have the editor up and running. It looks exactly like VS Code and also like Code Spaces. We know that it's not Code Spaces because in here we can see it's written GitHub instead of Code Spaces. So this is one of the ways we can differentiate. And here we have the content of my repo. It's important to say that this is there without the need of cloning my repo. It's working directly on my repo. I can change anything. For example, I can change the readme file. And now let's say I want to commit back to my repo. All I have to do is go into the source control extension over here. And as you can see, we have this message that says that when we commit, the changes will be committed directly to the main branch. So we are working directly on the branch we've opened in the repo. Let's save this. And when we press on commit, our changes are there. Now let's check the repository. Let's click on the application menu. We have this go to repository. And in fact, we can see that the change to the readme file has been made 10 seconds ago. Let's go back to our editor. There are a few more things I want to point out here. First of all, you can see that the activity we do in the editor is persistent. If you remember when we opened it before, I was in the file section. But since the last thing I've used was the source control section over here, now we are in the source control section, even though we exited and re-entered the editor. And this is even more visible, for example, if I change the color theme, we have the same themes we have in code spaces. Let's put it this solarized light. Now I go back to my repo. And if I go back to the editor, again, with the full stop on my keyboard, here we are, we can see straight away that the theme is being preserved. If we open the files, we can see a few more things. For example, if I open this JavaScript file, you can see I have full support, I have syntax highlighting, I have tooltips and everything. But if I, for example, open this C Sharp file, you can see that down below here on the right, we have this new mark. And if I mouse over, it says that only basic language support can be offered for this file. And this is because we don't have the C Sharp extension installed. We do have basic syntax highlighting, but not much more than that. The thing here is that if we go to extensions, we can install few extensions. But for example, if I search for the C Sharp, which I would use normally for this application, you can see that it's grayed out. And we have this message saying that the C Sharp extension is not available in VS Code Web. 
And this is once again, because we don't have any compute backing up our editor experience. So all the extensions that somehow can provide debugging or anything that require any compute will not work in this web editor experience. We can still install though all the extensions that don't require any compute. For example, if you want support for JavaScript or HTML snippets and, and many, many others, you cannot debug applications using the web editor experience. That is something that is reserved to code spaces. It's a great addition to the plethora of tools GitHub offers, especially if you think that this is completely for free. Comment down below with what you think about this new web editor experience. Consider that it's still in beta, so I'm pretty sure new features will be added, but I think it's really, really cool. Um, also, I will have soon another video comparing feature by feature code spaces and the new web editor experience. So consider subscribing because you don't want to miss that video. Finally, you may want to check this video over here in which I talk about the recent release in GA of GitHub code spaces and all the new features. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Quarter Day.